Hello everyone, David from Flash by V Cycle Nut here. As I anxiously, impatiently await the arrival of my new 2023 Kawasaki ZX4RR, I wanted to do a little bit of a deep dive into the ECU so I could show you guys what settings I'll be adjusting, what things you can expect from me with this bike, and why I'm really excited about it. So let's take a look at uh, the Woolix software is what I'll be using. And this is the main screen with the software open and you can see all the different options that we have. I have the main tuning parameters highlighted or arrowed uh, where you can see fuel maps, ignition maps, other maps, limiters, and advanced settings. We'll be taking deeper looks into these. The other stuff, if you can read it behind the arrow, it says new open settings, tune lock, right ECU, and recovery ECU. They're all things when we use to write the EC to the ECU or opening new files. Uh, configuration just allows us to link some maps that I'll show you up later. Engine data allows us to look at live data while we have the bike running. Diagnostics allows us to look at and clear troubleshooting codes. Auto-tune and data viewer are things I use when I data log uh, either on the dyno or data log when I do my real street riding uh, on the road. We'll get more into that as the tuning process goes First on. group of settings that we're going to look at is advanced settings. These are the more simple ones in the software in that they're either just pre-selected values like fan temps, uh, where there are, if we looked under that drop arrow, some different fan temps that we can set it to, or they're just check boxes, which means either yes or no. So we have disable O2 sensor fuel injection code, which means we'd be able to unplug the O2 sensor and not get a check engine light. For those of you that think this might be a bad idea, I suggest looking through some of my other videos where I did why we disable O2 sensors. Uh, disable fuel cut. A lot of people have a misconception that fuel cut has to do with engine braking. That's not, um, it's just helps smooth out the on and off throttle a little bit. Disable front wheel speed sensor. This would be good for when we're doing dyno runs so we don't get the check engine light and the dashboard blinking at us and things not working. Race shift quick shifter. Uh, this is nice. So if we change the shift pattern to GP, uh, the quick shifter and auto blipper will still work. This is really helpful in the software because sometimes we don't have this and then we got to come up with fancy dancy ways to come to GP pattern. So since for me, this is going to be a track day bike and for most, a lot of people, it's going to either be a track day or race bike. That's very useful. Disable pair FIO code. So what this means is we can unplug the pair valve or Yamaha speak AIS valve uh, and not get a check engine light. So we disable the pair valve uh, or we block it off so that when we're tuning, we don't get misreadings of air fuel ratios uh, and also to stop popping on diesel. Disable top speed limiter. I think we all know that, that what that will do. Disable fan relay FIO code. Uh, this isn't in every one, but I'm guessing if we like the pair valve and the O2 sensor, if we unplug the fan relay, we would get a check engine light and this would stop that. And then we have disable EVAP FI code. So if, if you have a model that has the EVAP container on it, we'll be able to check that box and you can unplug it and remove it and not get a check engine light. Now, I ha don't have my bike yet, so I haven't tested all of these settings that we're going to talk about uh, to make sure they work exactly as the next setting tab we're going to look under is limiters. And as you can see, this is really simple. The only limiter is the RPM limiter. It's adjustable in increments of 50 RPMs by clicking on the up or down arrows. And that's as simple as it gets. And now we're getting to some fun stuff. This is under other maps. On the left, you can see I have the box open to show all the other maps that are available. And the first one is that's highlighted is electronic throttle valve. This is the throttle maps. Um, and that's the one I have open. We're in map mode sport or full power and we're in group gear four. Over uh, by on the left again, you can see there's a bunch of other maps, ETV others, fuel trim, ignition trim, quick shifter strength, quick shifter time, wheelie control, and engine braking. So the ones that are labeled other usually are there for testing when we're trying to get rid of maybe limits in the throttle valves because we may set over on the right, you see I have a red block at 100% throttle and you see the actual throttle openings. So uh, some of them are blocked, but the first one we can really see is 7,000 RPM. So if we follow 7,000 RPMs across to the 100% throttle, you can see that if you're at 7,000 RPMs in full power in gear four 
at 100% throttle, you're only really getting 47%. And as the RPMs go up, you get 51%, then 67%, 83%. And the only place we truly get 100% throttle is at 11,000 and 11,500 RPMs. And then you can see the throttle closes down to 80 then 65 and 56. Obviously, when tuning, the first thing we would do is anything that's above 10,000 RPMs or 11,000 RPMs where we already have 100% throttle, we are going to make that 100% throttle. So there's no way it's going to make less power at, or with 100% throttle at the upper RPMs. But in the lower RPMs, we might not want to just make this 100% throttle. This is where testing has to be done. There is a throttle opening rate that will make for best power and that will stuff I'll have to determine on the dyno. So Kawasaki throttle maps work in such that they're percentages, not actual throttle openings. So if, just to make it easy, if we go to 50 across the top, which would mean you have your wrist turned to 50% and we go down to 11,000 RPMs, you can see that you're getting 89% of what you actually twisted, which 50 times 0.89, you'd actually be getting 44% throttle. So all these throttle maps all the way back are things that I massage and try to make better, obviously, right? And under these different roads, under map mode, there's sport with full power, which we're in now, and there's also low power. So I'll be able to make two different throttle maps for full power and low power. So maybe we can consider that rain or dry. Again, on this bike, my focus is going to be more track than just street uh, usually my focus is almost 100 percent on street because that's what 90 percent of us do i think on this bike it's going to be more of a track day bike and usually anything that is derived for the track usually still will work really well on the street if needed i will develop two sets of throttle maps one for the street and one for the track but i doubt that that will be needed we will also i'll also have to go through in each gear and determine opening throttle rates and what's ideal I'm not big on limiting 100% throttle um, power limits, even in our low power. My feeling is that if you don't want 100% power, you will not turn your wrist 100%. Even in the rain, on the racetrack, especially with rain tires on, you will be asking for 100% throttle at times. So if I limit the throttle, then you're going to slow down your lap times, which is obviously not what we want. What would change from full power to low power would be just the aggressiveness of the throttle. Uh, basically, you would get more return on the full power from your turn of wrist than you would in the low power. So as you can imagine, th this takes a fair bit of time, and this is where me actually testing the bike, riding it in real conditions, as opposed to just on a dyno, does make a difference for the throttle map testing. Uh, obviously, it's just a better way to test throttle maps. All the settings over on the left, um, it's kind of cool because we'll be able to make some tweaks or I'll be able to make some tweaks to the quick shifter uh, and auto blipper strength and time. So I've heard great reviews about the quick shifter and auto blipper so far from the people that have ridden the bike. But if it needs some tweaking, we'll be able to do it. Wheelie control also will be able to tweak that if we're finding it to be a bit too obtrusive. I'll be able to narrow or cut it down a little bit. The engine braking. So I find a lot of people have misconception about engine braking. A lot of people think that when you roll off the bike a little bit and the bike falls on its face, they will say, oh, it's got really harsh engine braking. But really engine braking is when the throttle's fully closed and we'll be able to adjust that. I do find that normally when I fix the lean fueling that is available or that there is stock, that that really smooths out that initial abruptness. And then the engine, normal engine braking usually feels pretty good after that. So uh, when we fully tune this and smooth it out, we'll be able to really get a nice uh, deceleration curve. Next, we're gonna look at the ignition tables. Uh, we can see in the upper left, we're in group full power. There's also a group for neutral and low power. And then we're on cylinder one. Uh, obviously there's four cylinders for this. I highlighted or boxed a group for you over at 100% throttle between 7,500 RPMs and 12,500 RPMs. And the reason I highlighted this is because I can see there's ignition timing restrictions built in here. Those numbers between 35 and 35 shouldn't sag like that. Uh, at, the, at the very least amount of timing they will take is 35 degrees. Uh, so that is something I'll be able to fill in right away without even really doing a lot of testing. The rest of it requires a lot of testing. Uh, everybody focuses on just on peak power and on the 100% throttle ignition timing tables. But usually I find areas, uh, even in the lower throttle areas, to smooth it out, maybe by taking some of the timing away. 
so th- it takes quite a bit of massaging and time and pract- or, and testing to uh, figure out what makes best power at 100% throttle and what gives us the throttle response we're really looking for at less than 100% throttle. And you, as you can imagine, this takes some time. Last thing we're going to look at is the fuel maps. And this is fuel mapping is what everybody really associates tuning with. But as you can see from all the other tables we've gone through, there's a lot more to it than that. I do apologize. I'm using iMovie to create these voiceovers, and it is trimming off uh, some of the pictures a little in a way that I'm not real happy about. But I've already put a lot of time in this and not going back. Uh, so you have to take my word on some of it. So in the upper left-hand corner, we have two different types of fuel maps. One is called IAP and one's TPS. IAP is a pressure map, and that's used more for cruising, small throttle openings. What the EC does is it overlays these maps, and as we're in the smaller throttle openings and lower RPMs, it's more biased towards these pressure maps. And then as we get into larger throttle openings and higher RPMs, it switches over to 100% throttle position mapping. The IAP maps are really good uh, tuning them with the data logging and driving the bike in real condition so that the load's right, everything, sensors are all seeing the same thing, airflow is the same over the bike. Uh, so it really allows me to precisely tune these IAP throttle maps, which is really what gives me that nice, smooth, um, proper throttle response that we're looking for. TPS maps are the larger throttle openings. We I use the dyno to get them um, maximally tuned for best power and of course the throttle response we're looking for uh, kawasaki this has given us the ability to put two fuel different fuel maps in this so under map mode we have full power and low power um what and what this will allow me to do is create a separate map for let's say race gas for the full exhaust systems which i do plan on doing and then you can also see that it's each by each cylinder so fuel mapping does take a long time it, it, it's um, a lot of work and massaging uh, but, you know, it's also a lot of fun. Uh, and I want to thank Woolick for uh, creating such a cool tool that gives me access to all these different parameters that allows me to tune mine and your motorcycle the way it be, should be tuned from the factory. I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, thanks for tuning in. And if you're still here, I'm quite impressed because that was a lot, a lot of me, blah, 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 blah. So everybody have a great day. Can't wait to get my ZX4R. Hopefully I'll be making a video today or tomorrow when I got it home. Peace.